All right, welcome to your on-campus interview. I'm your host, Cass Venner. Here I have Tim Kessel with me. Um, can you kind of introduce yourself and your position here at DSU? Hey, uh, I am Tim Kessel. I am an assistant professor of business and finance at Dickinson State uh, in the School of Business and uh, School of Business and Entrepreneurship. Very cool. Um, what brought you to DSU and how long have you been here? I've been here a long time, <laughs> which is great. Um, I started off uh, going to school here. Mm -hmm. um, I had a strange education. Normally you go to a two-year school first and then the four-year school. And I was going into computer uh, science and we didn't have a computer science major back then. Mm -hmm. So my advisor created 12 uh, classes in computer science with the intent that we would have a major by the time I graduated. And that major never mater materialized. So I said, I don't want to go to school for another two years. What should I do? He says, let's take you to the North Dakota State School of Science uh, and get a programming degree, computer mm -hmm. programming degree. So I went there. I was there for less than one quarter. Actually, it was a, a quarter back then. Uh, took 33 credit hours, graduated from there, transferred credits, and about two years later I got a call from the DSU, DSC back then, mm -hmm. the Dickinson State College Registrar, I said, Tim, are you ever going to graduate? And I said, I graduated two years ago. He said, no, you didn't. He says, you have to apply for graduation. <laughs> so I did. Okay. I went off into private business. I worked for the state of North Dakota. I, I did uh, work for a commercial bank, managed computer center. And I got a call from the uh, chairman of the computer science department and asked if I would be willing to teach some instructors uh, a computer science class. Mm -hmm. I said, sure. I was teaching what I called commercial education at the time. I would bring businesses in to my office. Uh, I'd bring in uh, individuals teach them Microsoft products, teach them some accounting software, things of that nature. So he knew I was doing that and, and I said, sure, I'd, I'd love to do that. So I did. I brought him in for three or four days. He said, called me up when it was done. Tim, you did a great job. I said, good. He said, I don't have anybody to teach that class at the, at the university. Are you interested? I said, I don't know how to teach at a university. <laughs> I've never done that. Mm -hmm. He says, you did great. You taught, you taught teachers. That's a challenge. Mm -hmm. So that was the next semester was my first uh, class as an adjunct. After that, he said, you also know how to do uh, computer networking. Would you be interested in teaching that? Sure. So I taught two classes, all the while while I was self-employed. The business department chair found out I was teaching. He said, would you be interested in teaching personal finance? Sure. So I taught three classes uh, the, the semester after that. Got a call from HR and said, you qualify for benefits. You're full time. I said, what do I need to do? She said, Nothing. She said, just continue teaching. So that was my, my start in, in teaching uh, at the university. I've always had a passion for teaching. Mm -hmm. It, it's something, when I was at a commercial bank in town, the uh, head of operations would, would go in and he'd fix a problem with the computer and he'd walk away and not say how to fix it in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. And I said right there, if I ever get a chance to teach people, I'm going to tell them how to do it. I'm going to tell yeah. them so they don't, how to do it so they don't have to come back to me again. They can, they can do it themselves. So that, that was a, a start. I went to the Graduate School of Banking in, uh, at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, and there was a, a marketing professor from the University of Kentucky that was there. And there was 300 and some students in, in my class. We were sitting wow. in the auditorium. And he was talking to me. He wasn't talking to the group. He was talking to me. Mm -hmm. I said, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So that led me to say, led, led me to believe I can do this. Mm -hmm. So that was the long story short. That, that was my introduction uh, in, in what brought me to Dickinson State. I've been here uh, a, a number of years back then when I did that. I taught for seven years. I went off into private business again. Always 
taught as an adjunct, taught night classes or even some day classes. And uh, about three, three years ago, prior to COVID, mm -hmm. I came back and uh, started teaching full time again. And Very cool. I'm enjoying it. Yes. So. Very cool. All roads lead back to DSU, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Glad to be here. <laughs> yes. Very good. Um, so what courses do you teach here? My title is uh, Assistant Professor of Business and Finance, and I, I really teach m almost all finance. Okay. I teach managerial finance, corporate finance, investments. Teach. Um, uh, <sighs> All the, I te I'm teaching some graduate level classes this semester as well. Um, I do teach on occasion a business class, I'll call it, but uh, mostly all finance. Okay, very yeah. cool. Um, what kind of majors are offered like within the business department? Like what paths can students go after college, I okay. guess? We've got a number of them. We've got a, a finance uh, major. We've got a, a business to administration degree in human resource management. Uh, we've got uh, uh, a, a number of them in, in, in business related areas as well. This allows students to, to go out into the workforce after they graduate. Mm -hmm. uh, my students tell me I tell a lot of stories, so I, I can <laughs> tell stories about that too. I had a computer science uh, student one time years ago, transferred from University of North Dakota. And I said, you know what, to this individual, you are probably the best computer science student that I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. But I said, you need to take some business classes. You need to be able to talk business with your clients. He did. He's the most successful computer uh, entrepreneur in Southwest North Dakota right now. Oh, wow. So that business education transfers to all different uh, areas, mm -hmm. not just finance or, or business. It's, it's in technology. It's in everything we do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so do you have a lot of seniors in your classes, you would say? I, I teach mostly 300 and 400 level classes, so okay. I do have a lot of seniors in there, gotcha. uh, a lot of juniors. Um, I've got some, actually I think I had a freshman in, in one of my upper level classes last year, mm -hmm. um, but a, a good student. So most of them are, are juniors and seniors getting ready to graduate, mm -hmm. um, trying to convince them to uh, explore our, our uh, MBA and, and uh, Master of Entrepreneurship program here also. Uh, and, and we've had some su success doing that. I think yeah. in my one graduate class I, I'm teaching here in the next eight weeks, I have 27 students. Oh, wow. That's uh, graduate students. So it helps them uh, with their careers, obviously. Totally, right? totally. Sounds like you guys have a pretty thing, pretty good thing going over here. Uh, we do. I mean, we take pride in what we're doing. Yeah. Um, there, there's a uh, the, the the passion is 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 instilled in all of us. Mm -hmm. To be a teacher, to be a good teacher, I think you have to have a passion. Yeah. You have to enjoy what you do. Um, I I present to my students uh, stories about my private enterprise. You know, if you take a class at any university, they're going to have a textbook, no doubt. Mm -hmm. We have a textbook. But what I think my students enjoy is when I go outside of the textbook and say, that's what the textbook says how to do it. Mm -hmm. Here's what works in real life. Yeah. Here's what you can do. So they get a good picture, a good broad background of, of those subjects. But I think passion is a big key yeah. to, to becoming a good teacher. Well, for sure. I'm mm -hmm. going I'm going into education so that's something huge to hear I would mm -hmm. say. So very good. Very exciting. Um, Take some business classes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with my final question, what does DSU mean to you? DSU is a career and it's a life. It, it's something that you, you want to do. It's something I want to do. It's something uh, I've, I've always said, the day I quit learning is the day I better retire. Mm. It's, it's just some, you know, wanting to keep abreast of what's going on in, in the business environment, in the world. Um, I know Dr. Drake says that his office is right next door here, and we exchange a lot of ideas. Mm -hmm. it, not just about my courses, but about business and how our students can uh, better themselves, how they can work into the community. Uh, that's there. Totally. Cool. Well, thank you very much, Tim. Thank We're you. We're happy to have you here at DSU. Thank you. Glad okay. to be here. Awesome. Yeah. Well, that wraps up the on-campus interview. Thank you.
What's up, Hawk fans? Welcome back to this week's episode of Hawk Talk. I'm your in-studio host, Xander Beeson, and today we have a very special episode. We have a very special guest. I will let you introduce yourself to the camera. Well, my name is Trace Wells, and I work at Consolidated Channel 18 as a video technician and been doing it for 12 years, a DSU alum from 2013. Love to hear it. Well, I just want to ask you, what brought you to Consolidated? What got you into working into this position? Honestly, uh, I knew my boss since I was about eight or nine years old. Oh, nice. And uh, I was really struggling to find something 2011, 2012. And I come in and uh, I'm like, hey, Ron, I uh, filled out this application. I want to be, you know, I want to film sports and stuff. I can do that. And uh, he's like, oh, do you have any experience? I'm like, I filmed for uh, ba basketball in high school. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's like, oh, well, we'll see. A couple months later, hey, uh, you still want that job? Yeah. yeah, and I've been here for 12 years. All right. I feel like I probably should have said this a little bit sooner, but Trace is one of the people that gets makes Hawk Talk go. It doesn't go without Trace and Ron. I know in a couple episodes we've referred to you guys as the people behind the camera. Well, today Trace is making his debut in front of the camera. It's he a little kinda, bit, uh, a little bit nervous. Yeah. Up here. It's not as easy as I make it look. I'm just no, saying. No, you, you were very good at it. <laughs> um, you kind of answered this the last question, but I just want to ask you: What are the, some of the things you do? for Hawk Talk specifically or just at Consolidated in general? Uh, for Hawk Talk and Consolidated Channel 18 in general, uh, I take uh, every show or every sporting thing and take it from step zero to putting it out on TV so, or so everybody can enjoy it. That's awesome. I know my mom watches them on Facebook and everything, so she always texts me. She's like, they're doing a great job over there. Oh, I was nice. like, I'll make, Hi, sure mom. I'll make sure Trace knows. <laughs> um, um, what's been your favorite thing about working at Consolidated? You know, uh, a lot of it is learning skills that I never would have had because in the beginning it was just me filming like baseball or basketball with one camera. Mm -hmm. We'd go and film back and forth, but I learned so many things. I'd have to learn how to balance audio. I have to learn how to generate graphics. Every Channel 18 graphics you see is between me and my boss. That's that's what we do. It's all generated in-house uh, to film commercials, to film interviews like the one we're doing right yeah. now. <laughs> all of this stuff is something I never would have known, and it's a blast. I get to come and do something I love every day. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, what are some of the things you like to do outside of work? You're not helping us out with Hawk Talk. You're not doing anything consolidated. What are you doing outside of work? What am I doing? Uh, the vast majority of the time, I am probably playing video games unless it's beautiful out. Yeah. Then I'm going out and just riding on my motorcycle. I'm not a speed guy. I'm a far guy. I will take my motorcycle on a ride six, seven hours, Wild turn hog. around and come back. I love it. I like that. You ever seen the movie Wild Hogs? I have seen the movie That's, Wild Hogs. You put a, bo put a nice bowl of green chili in front of me. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you could have dinner with any person ever dead or alive who would it be you know that i've actually thought about this question so much it's really funny uh dave grohl from the foo fighters and of the drummer from nirvana uh he just seems like a real nice dude yeah seems like a dude you want to talk to has a lot of life experiences seems pretty down to earth kind of guy you want to have a beer with dang i thought i'd catch you off guard i guess no, you know no, my no. tactics of no, asking maybe I, I, I have experience with this man's tactics i know <laughs> i'm in your head right yeah, now okay okay um what was, when you went to DSU, what was some of the things you did, like for fun, or what was your major when you were at DSU? Um, my major for DSU and what I graduated with was uh, psychology. So shout out to Dr. Wendy Wilson. Um, but uh, what, what I initially was going for is I had no idea. Mm -hmm. I went for generals. Uh, I came out of uh, UND, which is a great school. Yeah. But I came to DSU and I found a place. Yeah. And I really turned it around and I got my degree. A lot of the things I did is I, you know, I went to a few football games because, you know, big up. Got to. Got to. Go you got to. It was fun. Games. It was a lot of fun. I didn't go to the ones that were like super snowy or rainy because yeah, I was like, mm, I'm all right. You weren't but about that life. No, 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 no. It's fine. Right. It's fine. I mean, and then I filmed a few of them. <laughs> so it was like I was there in spirit. Yeah. So last question, you know, we ask this to everyone who comes on Hawk Talk. What does DSU mean to you? Everyone says family. Yeah, and it, while it was a family for me, uh, it was an opportunity for mm -hmm. me. That's the biggest one it was for me. Uh, it was my opportunity to get back on track and do something and make something that I could be proud of. And DSU gave me that opportunity and it worked. And here I am today. That's awesome. Well. That's all for me, but if you guys ever stop by a football game, basketball game, volleyball game, and you see a stunning man up in the bleachers <laughs> with a beanie and a camera, that's my man Trace. Don't feel, don't feel shy to wave at him. He's a great guy. He does a lot for us at Hawk Talk. Figured we'd 
give him his own interview, give him, get, him, get his beautiful face in front of the camera. Oh, yeah, Maybe we'll get Ron that. one of these times. Ron is a little camera shy, <laughs> but it's fine. But thank you guys, and I'll see you next week. Welcome back to another episode of Minute with President Easton. President Easton, what was your favorite memory from when you attended DSU? Uh, there's a whole bunch. Uh, I was able to do a lot of things. I, I remember a lot of the plays I was in. Those were a whole lot of fun. Um, one thing that uh, that I've heard other people say that I will that I will say also uh, is the athletics trips. You know, when you're taking them, they don't seem like a great thing. For me, it was it was golf in the back of a station wagon. It was actually a station wagon that we rode around into those golf meets, but uh, I had a buddy, Jeff Jessen, he and I were in accounting classes, and so we'd be in the back of the station wagon on those trips, uh, trying to keep up with accounting, teaching each other accounting, and then, um, you know, I don't know, all that, all, the, the trips seem like a burden in a way, but they really, they stick with you, and you remember, at least I remember them, them really fondly. Um, those were a lot of fun. Hello everyone, I'm your recap host Cheyenne and let's get into this week's recap. First, baseball traveled to Viterbo this past weekend to open NSAA play. They went 1-4 on the weekend against a tough Viterbo lineup. They will travel to Bellevue, Nebraska to take on the Bruins this weekend. Softball also traveled to Wisconsin to take on Viterbo where they put on a dominant performance going 3-1 on the weekend. They will travel to Jamestown to take on Dakota State this coming weekend. Blue Hawk Cheer also had a phenomenal weekend when they heard the news that they got an at-large bid to national finals in Michigan next weekend. They currently sit at number one in the nation. Outdoor Track is traveling next weekend to Spearfish, South Dakota to compete in the Yellow Jacket Open to start off their season. And volleyball and football have also started practicing and gearing up for their spring ball. As always, thank you to our viewers and sponsors. Don't forget to follow us on social media at DSU Foundation. As always, Hawks are up.